Welcome to the Tyco Electronics FOS450 Fiber Optic Splice Closure Training Video. This video will provide an overview of how to install FOS450 butt style fiber optic splice closures. FOS450 closure sizes range from the smallest, the 450A closure, to the largest, the 450D closure. For the purpose of this training video, we will use the newest closure, the FOS 450C. FOS 450 closures use a unique one-piece gel seal to seal cables entering the closure. For the dome to base seal, a mechanical clamp and O-ring are used. These design features allow quick and easy installations for a wide range of applications. Direct buried, below grade, above grade, pedestal and aerial. Installation Overview While the various size closures may differ slightly, all FOS 450 closures use the same basic installation steps. 1. Remove the closure from packaging. 2. Prepare the cables. 3. Attach the cables. 4. Store slack and unspliced fibers. 5. Route, splice and store fibers. 6. Install the gel block. 7. Seal the closure and test the seal. Let's get started with the installation. Remove the closure from the packaging. The closure will arrive in a pre-assembled state that will require removing the clamp separating the base and dome and removing the base from the cable retention plate also called the star bracket. Once removed, insert the cables to be installed through the base of the closure and slide the base out of the way. It is critical the base be placed onto the cables prior to cable termination as it will be impossible to add it later without undoing much of the installation work. Prepare the cables. Using typical cable preparation techniques, prep the cables to the dimensions described in the installation instructions. When using loose buffer tube style cables, center the cable reverse point where possible to allow easy separate and routing of the fiber tubes. Note that depending upon the type of cable to be spliced, whether loose buffer tube cable or a ribbon central core tube cable, routing procedures can vary. The installation instructions provide plenty of detail regarding prep lengths, etc. for the specific cable type. All FOS 450 closures are capable of handling up to four small drop type cables per port. These small cables, which are defined as cables of 0.35 inches or less in outside diameter, require the use of multi-cable accessory kits. For installing up to three small cables in a port, use the three-cable version multi-cable accessory kit, which features a one-piece sealing device. For installing up to four small cables in a port, use the four-cable version multi-cable accessory kit, which uses gel wrap for sealing. 3. Attach the cables. Select and attach the strength member bracket to the cable. Install the cable retention clamp using a hose clamp. Once assembled, the cable and hardware will resemble this. Next, slide the cable retention hardware and cable into the appropriate slot of the star bracket. Be sure to install the main loop through cable in the lower slots of the star bracket. When using the FOS 450A closure, note the closure has the cable retention feature built into the star bracket. Bring the cable to the closure, then install the appropriate strength member bracket. And secure it using the hose clamp 4. Store slack and unspliced fibers. Where slack storage is required, 
Tyco Electronics offers both standard and tall slack storage baskets for each closure size. Slack is stored in the baskets as follows. Separate the designated buffer tubes to be routed and spliced from the expressed buffer tubes. Store the expressed buffer tubes in the bottom of the basket first, placing the designated buffer tubes on top, allowing easy accessibility in the future. To splice, route, mark, ring cut, and remove the excess buffer tube, and clean the fibers per your approved practices. Add loose buffer tube wrap, route, and tie down designated tube to the tray for splicing. Attach branch or drop cable to be spliced to the star bracket using the same procedures as the main cable. Route, splice, and store fibers on tray, and install tray cover. The tray can be locked in the up position by using the red kickstand feature. Similarly for A and B closures, a tray prop is provided. Note one of the benefits of hinging trays is the ability to route buffer tubes directly to the tray in the event of fiber breakage or if insufficient slack is available. Secure tray to basket using Velcro strap. Note on ribbon cable routing. Central core tube ribbon cable preparation is very similar to that of loose buffer tube cable. We recommend bending the center tang of the strength member attachment away from the cable to accommodate the central core tube. Also, note how the cable strength members are attached to the outer two tangs. For storing ribbon slack, we recommend the use of the slack storage basket. If no slack storage is present, see the closure installation instructions for further detail. 5. Route Splice and Store Fibers There are several splice trays available for the FOSS 450 closures. Most closures have options for both single and ribbon splice trays. Refer to your installation instructions for additional information regarding fiber routing and storage on these trays. Note the single fiber C and D splice trays are horizontally placed splice modules which allow fiber to easily route and store along the outside edge of these trays while the A and B style FOSS splice trays use vertically oriented modules which may require the fibers to be stored in the ends, edges or along the center of the tray. Ribbon trays have special splice module orientations as shown here. 6. Install the gel block. The gel block seals the cable's entry into the closure's base. Open the gel block by squeezing the clip end. This exposes the slots into which each cable or multi-cable group will be placed. The slots nearest the hinge will hold the loop-through cable in most installations. As the gel block is being positioned between the cables, add the spacer to the star bracket and gel block as shown. Close the gel block and snap it together. Slide the base up and around the gel block. It's important to note the base must be aligned properly to fit the star bracket. Be sure to orient it to the proper position, slide the base onto the gel block and star bracket and secure. If grounding is used, connect the previously installed ground wires from the cables to the ground wires in the base. Add highly visible yellow port plugs to all unused ports. Grasp the gel block tail and move it to a position to allow access for tightening. Twist the tail until it can't be turned anymore or until it hits the built-in stop. You can use a screwdriver or similar device placed through the hole in the tail to make it easier to turn. If necessary, a wrench can be placed on the gel block to tighten. When the tail is tightened, the compressed gel fills the voids between the cables, 
lugs and base to create an airtight, watertight seal. 7. Seal the closure and test the seal. Verify that the O-ring is seated properly. Slide the dome over the tray end of the closure. Where applicable, make sure the arrows on the base and dome align. Once the dome is seated on the base, attach the clamp. And using the lever foot on the latching mechanism to create leverage, close the clamp. If the clamp dome or O-rings is out of position, it will be extremely difficult or impossible components are positioned correctly. A tie wrap or small lock can be installed through the hole in the latch for security if necessary. For closures with valve to domes, pressurize the closure to 5 PSI and perform a flash test, checking for leaks. Once the check is complete, release the pressure. Adding cables. One of the benefits of the FOSS 450 closures is the reusable gel block. To add cables after the original installation, just open the closure, loosen the gel block, remove the gel block and base from the star bracket, feed the new cable through the base, attach it to the star bracket, and reseal the closure. Summary. This concludes